Okay, and uh, welcome to the second of our uh, on-site virtual site visits. Uh, and you recall when we left off on the previous uh, video, the set out had been done. There was some markings on the ground. Some first fix plumbing had been done, which uh, had put all the plumbing that was on the ground in the right locations. And uh, some stormwater and wastewater trenches had been dug. Uh, and Basically, once all the, the few errors had been corrected, things were going to be in the right place. Now, I'll just back up a little bit and we can see the stage at which the uh, site is at now. What we're looking at here is the set out for the pour of the uh, concrete uh, slab uh, for the house. Um, what's happened up to this date is a couple of things. Obviously, the uh, trenches for the um, for the stormwater and the wastewater have been dug and filled in uh, uh, so that uh, concrete or other debris don't get into those uh, whilst the next stage of the construction go on. The footings will have been poured. Now the footings are the, um, uh, is the perimeter beam uh, which uh, runs around generally in a, in a, in a house which has, you know, doesn't have very reactive soil. We'll just generally go around the perimeter of the building uh, and will add, act as a kind of edge stiffener for the slab itself. Now the footings are poured prior to uh, the slab. They're poured in two, two phases. And um, the reinforcing rods that are part of the uh, footings, which give them uh, stiffness, which we'll talk about a bit later, um, have what are called starter bars come up. And these bars come up, and you can see there's these hook-shaped uh, rods that come up. And they will eventually, when we have, come and have a look at this side of the of the slab itself, you can see they hook in over the um, uh, the mesh, uh, the reinforcement mesh that is laid over the top of the, these pods that, again, we'll talk about in a second. So we're at a fairly important juncture of uh, the construction phase itself because um, the pouring of the slab is a fairly major task and understandably uh, uh, if something is in the wrong place or something is out it will the flow on effect of an error will be um, fairly critical as the rest of the building is constructed because uh, most of the design will require that there are certain um, uh, distances between uh, uh, internal and external uh, leaves of a wall uh, between internal leaves within a wall, within a room itself uh, which then will relate to the structure that goes on goes on above. So getting this stage uh, right is a fairly important kind of process and it's generally a time when there is a site inspection uh, called in order to make sure that things are all progressing uh, as they should. Now what you're looking at is uh, essentially the formwork uh, for the pouring of that slab. Now we just need to distinguish a few things here to make sure that you know what's uh, going on. The Footings are those beams, which, as I said, which runs around the perimeter. The slab is the uh, horizontal uh, component of the concrete uh, structure, which provides obviously the ground, uh, the ground floor, the flooring for the the house itself. The foundation are the the site conditions that sit underneath it. So, uh, foundations are essentially um, soil, which has generally been tested for its um, degree of moisture or reactiveness. Reactiveness means how much clay content is in it. Clay is um, uh, moves a great deal uh, when it gets wet and then dries out. So it's what's called a reactive soil versus something like a dry sand, which tends not to change its uh, geometry much when when it wets and dries, and so is less less reactive. Okay, engineers have to uh, design. Uh, the sizes of footings and the sizing of slabs in accordance with the um, the structure uh, in accordance with the type of soil conditions or the foundation there is and then what sort of structure is going to be uh, above it. Uh, the engineering design of a house um, is something which is a, 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 a complete system so it goes from designing the footings to a certain size, knowing that uh, it has to carry a certain type of wall. Uh, it might be a lightweight wall, which is just timber frame, or a very heavy one, like double masonry leaves of some sort, and different types of roofs then on top of those. So, um, as I said, the engineering design is a fairly complete kind of pra 
package and it's uh, important that all aspects of it work together well. <coughs> so what you're looking at as I said is the shuttering, the currently the shuttering for the um, for the pore of the slab. You can see it's made of uh, timber, uh, generally it's a fairly low grade uh, inexpensive timber and it's being held in place by some props and some star pickets with uh, little covers on them to make sure that it's uh, fairly firmly held in place. So once the concrete pour itself has started. Um, pours, generally this size would probably be done in just the one uh, in the one uh, pour. Okay, if you have larger slabs they can be broken up into a number of different uh, different pours at different times. Usually this is a, a logistics issue to do with how much concrete they can get on site at one time. And if that is the case, uh, engineers will design the individual slab portions uh, so that uh, when one is poured, it it can then still be keyed into uh, the the next, okay, to provide stiffness. So what are we looking at here? We're looking at a kind of uh, flooring slab system, which uh, in this instance it's called a waffle pod. Uh, it's called a waffle because the crisscross uh, grid uh, resembles a waffle iron. Okay, it's just a kind of colloquial name for it. In essence, these types of flooring systems, while they're not quite so common in, in South Australia, are quite common in, in the eastern states. Um, in essence, the concrete is poured over it. It runs down into these channels in, that sit in between the pods, which itself has reinforcing uh, mesh that you can see here. Okay, and then rises up to a height above the pod, uh, covering also the mesh to form the floor of the, the building itself. So what we're looking at is essentially a kind of a, a, a formwork that's in place ready to receive the concrete and things are placed in a particular heights and particular locations in order to to work as part of the structural design. Now you see that along with these these starter bars that come up and hook over there you can see this is obviously incomplete it has been left incomplete just so we can talk about what you would see there is, as I said, there's the rod which sits in between the channels. And there's also this reinforcing mesh that we can see here which sits over the top of the waffle pods itself. Now, the reason for that is that um, concrete is good in compression. It resists forces that could try to compress it, but it's not too good in, in tension. It tends to kind of crack. And so whilst steel is uh, good in tension, they're very efficient in terms of tensile forces. It's not so good in terms of compressive forces. Certainly not when it's as, th as thin as this. And so, but working together using reinforcing mesh and the concrete, the the, the relative strengths of each uh, work together to form a a com comprehensive uh, structural system. Now, one of the things you would do when you were doing a site visit of this sort, whether you're a builder or an architect, is just to make sure that everything is in its right place. Okay. You would, uh, because as I said earlier, the the process of pouring slab is a time-consuming and expensive process, and uh, fixing it is uh, even more arduous. If something is wrong, is even more arduous task, not to be not to be done if it can be avoided. Now, there's obviously an issue here. Uh, there's missing a little bit of the reinforcing mesh, so there'd be a just general query to say, you know, I'm, that is going in, is not. You notice too that the mesh has been uh, lapped here. Okay, there are certain kind of tolerances for lapping which are necessary to make sure that uh, um, the mesh itself works overall. Uh, mesh needs to comprehensively cover uh, all of the area of the slab. Now obviously this bits at the on the northern edge here have been left out because um, again the process is not finished just yet. One thing that we need to take a little bit of care of and looking at is this uh, plastic sheeting that you can see sitting underneath the waffle pods and underneath the reinforcing mesh. Now this is the vapour barrier. Uh, it's a, a structural plastic uh, which um, uh, ensures that there's a kind of uh, a plasticised uh, barrier between the ground and the concrete uh, that sits on it sits on top of. The reason for this is that uh, concrete uh, is a very good um, absorber of moisture okay particularly when it's untreated and as a consequence um, if uh, there are any tears or any uh, unlapped joints or untaped joints in the uh, vapor barrier there's a chance of moisture traveling being drawn up uh, through the what's called osmosis which is the sucking up of moisture up through the uh, uh, up through the slab which would appear as 
uh, damp spots within uh, the building itself. Now, uh, a lot of you will be familiar with things like salt damp uh, in old houses, in, in, protect, in particular in South Australia, in which uh, footings um, uh, have not had uh, vapour barriers in them, and as a consequence, over time, uh, water has been uh, pulled up into the wall and you see uh, the salt, which is a form of efflorescence, which appears on the surface of the buildings and in, and in interiors and can cause a number of headaches in terms of you know, structural efficiency and even in terms of you know, growth of mould and mildew inside the building. So the vapour barrier is a fairly important um, uh, component of it. Uh, when you have a look at some of the, the detail drawings for the, uh, the ed slab edge details, uh, you'll notice that the vapour barrier has a particular location has to go to in, to in order to form a kind of complete kind of, uh, as I say, barrier between between the ground area and the building above. Um, what else is there to talk to you about? Uh, what probably the last thing to mention in little detail is these, you can just sort of see them here, these little chairs or little kind of... Um, plastic uh, items that the the mesh itself sits on. These have uh, a very particular role to play because they keep, they make sure that the uh, that the um, uh, they make sure that the mesh sits at the appropriate height. Um, one of the ways, as I said, tension and compression in the slab works is that um, the, mil the mesh has to be at a certain height in order to make sure that it's doing most of the work of receiving the tensile forces. So the chairs there has to be a sufficient number of chairs and they have to be in the right place as well. Probably something which uh, would be done, which we haven't, you aren't not seeing on the model here, is that would be a sleeve placed around the, the water pipes, uh, which would allow for them to um, avoid having concrete go down them, because obviously these are part of the, now the plumbing system of the house, and they would need to be um, uh, protected when, whilst the pour is on. Uh, that extra bit of um, uh, pipework is then sort of sawn off, flush with the top of the slab, uh, when the time comes to put the drains in and connect it up to the water system uh, itself. Um, what else to look out for in a site visit such as this? Uh, you need to know to make sure everything's in fairly good order, that uh, there's no degradation on the mesh itself. A little bit of surface rust is often is okay, but generally it's it's preferred that it isn't there. Um, uh, what else? I think that's probably just about it. Uh, so what we're going to be seeing next is. Um, the framing that will go on top of it. So the slab, once it is poured, will sit, will cure, which takes uh, anything from a week upwards, depending on weather conditions and the, the degree, of the volume of concrete in the slab itself. And once that's done, and the slab is sufficiently hardened and stiffened to be in construction, then um, the formwork is removed. Uh, the these. Uh, the timbering, the shuttering, sorry, is removed. The form underneath the slab, of course, stays in place. Um, but the shuttering is removed. Uh, the slab is kind of revealed, and then uh, the the construction of the uh, framing and and the masonry leaves can uh, commence in earnest. And that's what we'll be looking at when we come to our next site visit. So, I uh, hope you this has been informative, and uh, I'll see you in the next one.